Hi, I am Dr. Arshad Haki, Senior Consultant, Head and Neck Oncology, Apollo Cancer Institute, Hyderabad. Today, we will talk about carcinoma of the larynx or cancer of voice box. Uh, cancer is uncontrolled growth of cells. And if this uncontrolled growth of cells occurs in your voice box, we label it as laryngeal cancer. It's a serious disease. Last year only we had around 1,90,000 newly diagnosed cases of laryngeal cancer. Last year only we had around 99,000 cases dying of this cancer. Now uh, all of us know that the cancers are mostly associated with uh, tobacco or alcohol. This cancer also is related to uh, tobacco use, mainly in the form of either uh, smoking which may be either cigarettes or BDs or hookahs and more so if person is using alcohol along with the tobacco because both tobacco and alcohol will act synergistically that is they will multiply the effect of carcinogenesis or cancer formation some of these cancers may be related to human papilloma viruses or some uh, benign papillomas of the larynx may transform into a cancer or sometimes uh, some people who have uh, long-standing uh, reflux of the acid into the pharynx, what we call laryngopharyngeal reflux, this, is, this also forms a risk factor, factor for such cancer. Now, all of us know that larynx is an important uh, organ and it is situated uh, in the mid of upper aerodigestive tract and lower airways with three important functions. First is phonation that is speaking, it helps in speaking with which we communicate. Second, it, ha it helps in passage of air from the upper aerodigestive tract into the lower air uh, airway that is breathing. Third, it also closes during swallowing that is it prevents passage of food into the lower airway from the upper aerodigestive tract once the food passes from upper aerodigestive tract into the esophagus and prevents swallowing of the lower airways which otherwise is fatal. Now, any patient who has a cancer of the larynx and his larynx gets damaged because of this cancer will present with either uh, hoarseness or difficulty in breathing or sometimes there may be noise coming during breathing which we call strider or they may present with pain in the neck or throat or they may present with cough and this cough may be sometimes occasionally associated with uh, uh, blood that is hemoptysis. Sometimes they may also present with a swelling which may be either in the midline of the neck because of the cancer protruding into the soft tissues, extending into the soft tissues of the neck or may be present with a swelling in the lateral neck which is mainly due to the metastasis into the lymph nodes. Now if any person who has these above mentioned signs and symptoms, he should consult a specialist head and neck surgeon who will examine his larynx in the office based. Um, uh, laryngoscopy or do an indirect laryngoscopy with a simple mirror and tell him whether he has a suspicion of growth in his voice box. Apart from uh, doing the office based laryngoscopy, he may run uh, the patient through some scans like a CT scan or an MRI scan or a PET CT scan and extend and will tell you the extent of the disease or the stage of the disease. He may also uh, advise a biopsy for this cancer which is uh, biopsy means of taking small bit of tissue from this growth and sending it to a pathology and confirming that there is a cancer developed in this growth in larynx. Now if a patient with a laryngeal cancer, diagnosed laryngeal cancer comes to me and I collect all the information about the pathology, about the scans and examination then it is my duty to know to see that this uh, voice preserving or a larynx preserving protocol is applied to this man or this woman so that his larynx and voice is preserved. We can early cancers like stage 1 and stage 2, T1 and T2, I do by removing these cancers transorally. We don't give any outside incision. It is a minimally invasive surgery under microscopic guidance and use of a CO2 laser. We remove these small tumors with the help of that. This is usually done off space. That is, he comes in the morning, gets the surgery done, and by the evening they are discharged with no outside cuts or no other thing done on the patient. 
and if the patient if the cancer has slightly advanced then still we have some conservative laryngeal open conservative laryngeal procedures like supraglottic laryngectomy or vertical partial laryngectomy or even a supracricoid laryngectomy which can be used in some advanced stage 4 cancers also to preserve their voice and preserve their lung power speech without having a trachea stroke but unfortunately lot of patients do come to us with very advanced cancer like stage 3 stage 4 cancer in stage 3 cancers, if there is no frank cartilage erosion, we can still preserve their larynx by chemotherapy and radiation based protocol uh, which helps them in preserving their larynx and voice and without atrocity. But uh, some patients which are really stage 4 with gross erosion of the cartilages, they have to undergo a total laryngectomy which means removal of their complete larynx and they will have a permanent trachea stroma. But these patients, they will be eating by their mouth, but uh, with a permanent tracheostoma in the neck and their voice is rehabilitated best by performing a tracheoesophageal puncture and putting a, a tracheoesophageal prosthesis in that so that their speech is rehabilitated. Most of these patients, they do well and they are rehabilitated and do their routine work as they are doing before surgery. Thank you.